This is Steve Zeltzer with Workweek and I'm talking with Roger Marenko. He's president of TW Local 250A, representing the, the bus drivers in San Francisco. Welcome to Workweek, Roger. Thank you, Steve. So, Roger, today uh, there are uh, actions around the country and internationally to honor uh, the life of George Floyd. W- what do bus drivers feel about what's happened and, and what this means to the people of this country and to uh, African Americans? The operators are extremely sad in terms of seeing all these developments um, that have been taking place in terms of, uh, you know, black men and black women being murdered by police. And so, you know, we are taking a stance with the other, um, our other brothers and sisters from across the country and actually across the world in terms of honoring the memory of George Floyd today, Tuesday, June 9th, 2020, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to be shutting down the entire system for 8 minutes and uh, 48 seconds, which represents the time that um, that, that officer um, stood, uh, kneed on the neck of George Floyd and, and murdered him. And the, sis- the, the situation of, of systemic racism in this country... Uh, discrimination against African American Latinos. It seems like it's uh, for a lot of uh, a lot of workers. It's coming to a head that something has to be done. And what role should labor play in in fighting the systemic racism, the continuing uh, murders and attacks on African American Latinos, particularly? One of the roles that it should play is to not play into assisting, you know, the uh, police department in whatever requests or services that they are asking for. For example, with us transportation, we should not be transporting anybody, um, you know, from the uh, police department to any of the events or protests that are happening. Let them, let, let, the, let, let the police find their own way to get there. And we're speaking with Roger Marenko, president of TW Local 250A in San Francisco. And there has also been a campaign about defunding of the police department, uh, the, the kind of cutbacks that public workers, frontline workers are facing in the city and county of San Francisco, and the, the public health care crisis, the lack of funding for public services. And the, this is combined now with the public uh, funding crisis. The O'Connell says that they don't want to have any more funding for, for states, city governments uh, who are in tremendous debt because of the COVID crisis and trying to deal with helping people. Uh, where do you see this going? I remember I heard statistics on the radio that said that uh, the average salary for a teacher was, I think, uh, $39,000 per year. And for a police officer, I think it was uh, $89,000 per year. That goes to show you right there a huge discrepancy in terms of pay that, you know, is occurring here in the United States of America. And in terms of defunding the police department, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm all in favor. Let's, uh, let's educate, not incarcerate. Let's build more schools as opposed to prisons. Let's hire more teachers in lieu of officer, police officers. And the militarization of the police, a lot of the military supplies from the U.S. government have gone there. Uh, the budget of the U.S. government, a large part of it goes to the military for over 800 bases around the world. Do you think that that should be an issue for defunding? Steve, I'm losing. You say it again. Oh, the, the the militarization of the police, uh, military equipment has been going to the police. In addition to that, a, a large part of the U.S. budget is for military bases and military ships all over the world. Do you think that working people, the union, should look at the question of uh, defunding or cutting back massively the military in the United States and putting it to human needs? Absolutely, without a doubt. You know, it goes to show you what this country values right there. You know, it it values war. It values uh, profiting off of the health, safety, and lives of the average poor working blue-collar workers here in America. And that should definitely uh, be an alarm for any and every American citizen uh, here in the United States of America. And your members, uh, some of your members have been targeted, uh, ATU members in Chicago, uh, uh, Eric, um, 
uh, Eric uh, uh, Slater was was terminated because he was talking about the action of the unions, the transit unions, in saying that uh, transit workers should not drive buses. Uh, do you think uh, it's a concern that the, the democratic rights of union members to free speech uh, is an important issue that they're able to speak up about their concerns? Yes, and all, too often, you know, workers are um, are gagged and they are reprimanded for speaking out about the facts in terms of what's going on and what's happening here on a daily basis at our job sites. And that right there is one form of retaliation, hence the reason why many workers are actually afraid to stand up and speak out. Um, but, you know, one step at a time, we'll, we'll get there. So what, what's going to happen at noon? We're having everybody pull over and um, honor the memory of George Floyd for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. Okay, well, I want to thank you again uh, for joining us on Work Week. This is Roger Marenko. He's president of TWU Local 250A in San Francisco, representing the transit workers who as well have been fighting for their health and safety with the COVID crisis. So thanks for joining us on Work Week, Roger. Thank you, Steve.